I know we're talking about Matt and uh, you know the fact that he's gay. Did you know before he came out to you that he was gay? Did you have any inclination or how did that come about? You know, when he was two, I had an inkling. Today, she tells me that she didn't know I was gay till six weeks ago. <laughs> it was explain, wait, hold on, explain to me, I thought you knew that I was gay with my last boyfriend. No. Well, no. Because so you never... weren't that connected. <laughs> we weren't that so, connected. Yeah. No. But we slept in the same bed. You did? We lived in this... No, how do I identify myself? No one's asked me that before. Um, I guess, is, am I supposed to be like a G, an L, a B, or a T? Or an S, or a Q, or an A? I think the media, in depicting members of the LG, I always get the initials mixed up. <laughs> is there an F? What's the F for? Is that for friend? Fluid. Yeah. Do I have... No, I don't have any fluid. Thank you, though. Um, I've heard about fluid. Um, they sound very interesting. I went on this quest to create a new pronoun that's gender non-specific, and then I realized, okay, first off, you're doing too much, and second off, how about bump that? You don't need to go by a pronoun, just go by your name. Like, why do I have to identify by a pronoun? No, I am a big fat G. Yes. I'm as G as you can be. I knew by the time she was probably around 16 months old that she was gay. The fear that I had coming out was only related to the awkwardness of discussing sexuality with parents. And I said to her, you know, like, Mom, just so you know, I think I'm probably going to date a girl soon. And she would say, no. No, you're not. And um, if we were out somewhere, I would purposely try to let her know. Like if I saw a woman that I thought was attractive, I would say, Mom, like that girl, I think that girl is attractive. Oh, Miranda, no. He said, uh, I have something really important I want to tell you. So what? So I'm gay. And I said, are you serious or are you joking? Like, is this, you know, you're trying to see what my reaction might be or is this a, a serious conversation? He said, no, I'm serious, I'm gay. And, so I gave him a hug and I said, I love you and this, you know, I don't care. And uh, I said, grab one of those bags. And we went back inside and I opened the door and I said, mom, you owe me 20 bucks. I always told you he was gay. I didn't feel comfortable really for a very long time. And, uh, you know, as, as, I got, as I got older and I really started to feel more of like the loneliness and more of like the, the desire to be in a relationship that really filled me, then I started having that, that battle and uh, eventually the, the right side won. I still am a Christian and I still believe in and God and all that stuff, but I really do think that we're put here for a reason and we're made in His image and there's no reason why we should feel like we can't be who we are. There's nothing to overcome. It is what it is. We, we have to accept, you know, his hair's brown, you know, my, my hair's gray, her hair is red. That's how it is. And it's the same with our sexuality. That's how it is. We were born that way. People are afraid to make a, make a move. People are afraid to speak out. Stop being afraid, just, just do it. If, if you do it, other people can follow. You can create, you can pave the way for other people to do that. That's how change happens. They have no idea what it is to come out or to tell anybody close to them and they just suppress it and they, you know, unfortunately we've had so many teen suicides lately with the bullying and everything and I just, it's one of the most important things to get out there and teach a lesson that we really, we need to stop losing these lives. These are lives that don't need to be lost. You know, my last suicide attempt was when I was, when I was in college um, uh, and that was uh, really stupid. Um, but then I, I realized that I should probably spend my time and energy into figuring out why I'm here. Um, that there's a greater purpose for me. And so that's been kind of the direction that I've been going and something that I've been focusing on. You know, trying to, um, you know, to make the world a better place. It's fine when you're like in the first, second, third grade, and then in fourth grade, of course, I was the first one to get Calvin Klein designer jeans. That led to some problems. Like straight people don't go around thinking, oh, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight. Gay people don't go around thinking, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. Right, so no, that's what I've always so said, why but... do straight people think that gay people are making a political s statement just being who they are. We raise the kids with no particular um, identification on gender at all. 
We gave him transformers and dolls. People who consider themselves to be progressive thinkers think of it as a matter of tolerance or acceptance, something they need to accept. I accept that you're gay. There's nothing to, to accept or not accept. It, it is what it is. Do, do people say, I accept that you're straight? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's just, it's absurd to me. It used to be that every time anyone would talk about gay people in poker, it would be like, well, there's Vanessa, but there's no one else. And Jason recently came out um, a few months ago, and that was really great. You know, it really said, you know, said like this isn't sexuality has nothing to do with it. There's no reason I should hide this. When when it came time to post, I had written it. I had spent so much time looking it over, making sure it was perfect. I I was like literally about about to click the mouse, and I turned to to Vincent, and I go, "You sure I'm gay, right?" And he's like, "Yep." And I was like, "All right, I guess I have to click." So <laughs> I hit post, and we went to dinner. And when, by the time we got back, I had so many messages already of support. It's still completely st stigmatized in the athletic world. And for me, so, as someone who grew up in sports, who every day of my life has in some way revolved around sports, who knows just how great it can be to be an athlete and be part of a team and to win something, we need to give LGBT athletes that opportunity if it's something they want. And for too long, we've scared away athletes. We're losing athletes because they don't think they can fit in a locker room. And even in, you know, in entertainment, it's still, you know, there's still a big stigma attached to it. People are concerned that, you know, they won't be as desirable to, you know, their potential fans, and therefore their endorsements won't be as big if they come out. And it's just all these, like, I think, honestly, misperceptions in a lot of ways. Anybody in the public eye, even, huge celebrities should use that as a platform to reach out and to really you know share their story because there's so many people out there that just don't know what to do have you guys walked many carpets is it different like displays of affections between you know two gay men on the carpet i mean do you guys feel awkward or is it completely natural it feels pretty natural i mean i'm really gay so i don't care yeah. it was it was much harder hiding it actually <laughs> when i was younger than it is now the bottom line is our strongest position is our truth. I think there, we need to see so many more people out there who are openly gay and who are doing admirable things and open those doors so wide so that finally you just sort of, these people kind of give up their weapons of hate and just lay them down and say, forget it, it's too big a fight, I can't fight it. Hi, my name is Patrick Burke. My name is Craig Luganis. My name is Carson Cressley. My name is Vanessa Selbst. My name is Miranda Forster. I'm Eliza Roberts. My name is Keaton Simons. I'm Eric Roberts. I'm Jason Somerville. I'm Josh Strickland. What would you think if I was trans? <laughs> I would just find your clothes. <laughs> I'm not insulting you in any no, way. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs>